anyways so um all right so we're just looking for these operations here and it's just like you did before like there's there's nothing new here um okay so for the last for the for the last two for number three you do have to distribute those two parentheses for number four um we say you know one divided by the other now if if by factoring the top and the bottom there are going to be that you know some terms that are going to cancel then you have to go that extra step and do that however if by factoring you're really not going to be able to cancel anything then you don't have to go that extra step okay now as far as domain is concerned right in the first case, what would be the domain? Oh, right, negative to positive infinity because that's a polynomial function. And that's the same for number two and number three, right? Mm -hmm. And what about number four? Oh. It can't be what? Four over three. Four over three. So it's um, anything negative infinity to four over three. 4 over 3 to positive infinity, okay? Right? Okay. Uh, so, okay, so let's go to, that was just basic operations with functions. Let's go to composition of functions. Again, you've seen this several times in the past. Compositions of functions is when one function is made up of two or more other functions. So basically you have a function within another function, f of g of x. Um, initially you're used to writing it like this and then we introduce this other notation, right? f of, it's a circle, g of x. They mean the exact same thing. All right, so here, um, let's go ahead and find f of g of x, g of f of x, and then f of g of two. So in the first case, we're going to do f of g of x. So basically what we're going to do is g is going to be inserted into f. So it's going to be two times. In the place of x, we put g squared minus 1. Okay? <clears throat> now, that's 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 1. So 2x squared plus 12x, and then that's going to be plus 17. Okay? In the second case, when you have g of f of x, that's going to be we're going to start with the outside function, which is g, right? Which is x plus 3. In the place of x, we're going to put in our other function, plus 3. So that's going to be 2x squared plus 2. Okay, for number 3, we want f of g of 2. This we're going to do in reverse order. We're not going to start with f. We're going to start with g. So first, find g of 2. That would be 2 plus 3 equal to 5. And now you insert that into f. So now you're going to have to find f of 5, 2 times 25 minus 1, 49. Okay? You can do it from the outside in, but man, is it more complicated and, and unnecessarily so. Okay? Questions? All right, I'll give you two minutes to do the next one. All right? Again, we want f of g of x, g of f of x, and so on.
And then last is f of g of 2. Don't forget that. All right. Everybody ready? All right. So, anybody have any issues? Yes, no? Uh, this I would watch out for. In the case of G of the F of X, you have... Um, x minus the square root minus 1 squared and we do this the same way we do everything else you square the first you get x minus 1 you square the last you get plus 1 the inside term is 2 times minus 1 times the root negative 2 times the root okay all right those are the fun ones okay how did you, sorry, how did you do the little ones again? It's 2 uh -huh. times minus 1, which is negative oh, 2, times, times, times the root. All right. Other questions? Okay. Let's move on. Um, one thing in, that you have to do in calculus is you have to be able to, to decompose a function into smaller functions from which they came. Okay. To decompose a function h, you have to find f of g such that h is f of g. So for example, take a look at h here. It's 3x minus 1 squared. So what you have to do is think back to your parent functions. You have a square here, right? Um, when you zoom out, you have some stuff squared. So that is your outer overlying umbrella function okay and then within that somebody inserted 3x minus 1 okay so you have to make the outside you know one of these parent functions so um, how would you do the bottom one here what do you think would be the outside function yeah uh-huh Right, or we could make f of x, 1 over x squared, and then g of x, x plus 2. Okay, so, um, this, so if you have an exponent, you always take that as your outer function as well. Okay. Or wouldn't the parent function just be 1 over x? Or 1 over x squared. There are two different functions. 1 over x and 1 over x squared are two different functions. So what about this one? Yeah. g of x could be the uh, value of 5x plus 2 and that's x squared minus 3. But that's not a radical. That's an absolute value. Yeah, I know, but when you square, if you if you square a radical with the x, that's why there is the exponent. So yeah, uh, f of x would be x squared minus 3. An absolute value is not necessarily. But you can keep the absolute value. So absolute value of x minus 3, right? And then g of x would be 5x plus 2, all right? Now, I'm going to give you two minutes to think about that next one because it's a little bit more involved. All right, let me stop this for two minutes. So what if, okay, so we need an f of x and a g of x, right? Okay, so the thing is we've got a square root and a, and a, and a square, okay? What if we make g of x just x squared, okay? Then what would f of x be? How about that? Well, what would the bottom be? X minus 1 in the root. Okay, so now when 
if g of x is x squared and I put it in, in place of x, then I get the square root of x squared minus 1. So square root of x on top. Right? Huh? This is a little bit confusing. This I just put for, for you're not going to get anything this complicated. If you know a and b, then you know a and b. I mean, then then you're good. Like All right. Like b for the parent function, like in b, just this the absolute value of x, isn't that just a parent function? Right, but if you do absolute value of x, then how could you do... The thing is, you have to make it such that you have to insert something else and you get h of x, right? So if, if f of x was just absolute value x, then is there anything... Can you insert anything for x and then also get the minus 3 outside? You see that? Yeah. So like everything on like the skeleton, everything on the outside has to be set. And then you, you can just insert the stuff inside. Yeah, okay. All right. So here, consider this function. And um, we want to talk about the behavior of the function as x approaches 0, all right? So let's talk about this for a minute. So this is the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. In other words, this is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus 1 over x, okay? As x approaches 0, conceptually means as x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now, x is here as a reciprocal function. You have 1 over x. And as x gets increasingly small, so you have 1 divided by x. You have 1 pizza divided among x people. All right? If you have 1 pizza divided by two people, then you know how much everybody gets. If now the, the group gets bigger, so if you have 1 being divided among 50 people, think about how much everybody gets. Now if you have 1 divided among like a throng of a million people, think about how much everybody gets, right? So as x approaches 0, what would 1 over x approach? Right, so what would it be? Oh wait a minute! I'm sorry. I was I was I, my, my my reasoning was wrong. We're we're gonna decrease the number of people. I'm sorry. So imagine as the number of people is decreasing, right? So you have one pizza. You're dividing it among a hundred people, and now the group gets smaller and smaller and smaller. What happens to the? So it's infinity, right? So it's gonna be one minus infinity. Don't ever write one minus infinity. I don't ever want to see you writing something like this because that doesn't work. Okay. However, it's going to be 1 minus a very large number, right? Okay. What's 1 minus a large number? Is it positive or negative? Negative. negative but is it going to be a large number or a small number? It's a negative. Okay, so let's say you have like 1 minus 1,000. How much is that? Negative 999. Nine, nine. So basically, this is going to be negative infinity right it's like if you have one minus a million it's still like a large number but in the negatives right so it's going to be negative infinity so now what happens as x approaches infinity so this is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 over x now, as the denominator gets very large, what's 1 over a very large number? As x gets very large, 1 over, like 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million. What's happening to that? It's very, very small. It's going to approach 0, right? And then if you do 1 minus that small number, it's going to be almost what? 1. Okay. So, yeah, there, well, there are going to be parts, no calculator and calculator. So, think about this again. This 
will approach zero as x gets very, very large. All right? So what I was saying initially, if it's one pizza divided by like a million people, each person gets zero pieces almost, right? And then one minus zero is going to be one. All right, let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> this sort of ties into number 50, which one, 60 something that I was doing before, right, from the homework. Okay, so here we want f plus g of zero. What does that mean? That means f of zero plus g of zero. So now f of x is the blue one. What's f of zero? Negative six, right? Plus, what's g of zero? g is the red one. What's g of zero? Negative six again. So this is going to be negative 12. All right, so you just basically like go to the function and take your graph okay, from there. You do like g of 0 is negative 6, and then you do the f of negative 6. Right, but it's not asking you for f of g of 0. Oh, it's asking you for, okay. The next one is f of g of negative 4. So remember what we do here? We start from the inside. g of negative 4 is what here? g of negative 4 is negative 4. Now you go to the outside function, and I want f of negative 4. Does it? So negative 4 is here. g of negative 4 is negative 4. Right? That's the red one. So now I want f of negative 4, f is the blue one, it's still negative 4. Okay? All right? So you want to start from the inside and then you want to plug it in. Like, they're, they're irrelevant. It helps if, like, let's say if you're doing the red one, visually ignore all the other graphs. Just look at the red one. And then if you're doing the blue one, visually ignore all the other graphs. So it doesn't mean that they're, like, it doesn't mean anything that they're touching, they're not touching, da 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 Okay? All right? Now, um, as I mentioned, we're covering the next section, 1.7, on Monday, and the test is Thursday. All right? This homework here is due Monday. Okay?